It's really funny. So in Acts chapter 7, in Acts chapter 7, um, Stephen, it's a really powerful passage actually if you're speaking to yeah, Trinitarian but, Christians. Yeah, of course. We believe was the was the uh, was the influence of what we is what is now termed the early church fathers, men who came from Gentile pagan backgrounds, who I believe did have genuine faith experiences, in the fact that they came to believe that uh, Yeshua Jesus was um, the promised anointed one, he was the prophet like Moses, but as they started to read the scriptures, they wrestled with their cultural baggage and upbringing. Mm. You know, our cultural identity is, is something in our modern age that actually starts to get very blurred. But if you go back to more traditional countries, for example, cultural identity, dress, um, religious ceremony, dances, rites of passage, they're really strong things. They're really difficult to shake off. And, and these, these, these Greek early church Gentile fathers mm. brought with them all the Hellenistic, pagan philosophy and theology and ideas mm. about who God was. But do you think that that started with starting with overpraise with Jesus when he healed leper, cured the blind? No, 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 actually what's really interesting is that there is no instance in the New Testament of anyone recorded worshipping Jesus or thinking he was God Almighty on account of the miracles he did. However, in Acts chapter 15, when Paul and Barnabas are in a Greek town, they actually heal a bloke who was born lame from birth. As a result of this, surrounded by the Greeks who believed in a pantheon of gods, it says they proclaim the gods are here among us. They said that Barnabas was, was Hermes, and oh, sorry, Barnabas was Zeus, the most high god, and Paul was Hermes, his spokesman. And it says that the- But I think, I think if you, Stay on the Jesus account, not Paul's account. No, if you if you stay on that, yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. important because what happened is that the priests of, of Zeus came out to sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas because they said the gods have come down here amongst us. And Paul says something really important. He says, "Men, we are but men of the same nature of you as you." Yeah, I I, I think there is no issue with God is with us. God is with us no, with, no, with everyone in. So, on account of the miracles that Jesus did, no one thought he was God Almighty. Yes, that's, that's, the Greeks thought... That's what I wanted to know, yeah. Stuff, mm. And they made the mistake thinking, oh, God's down mm. here on earth. Yeah. So you're seeing how the Greek mind thought. And if you think those minds then came to influence the theology of the church, you could understand how these people in position of power and authority could replicate or transmit their belief of a God being born of a woman, becoming man, how that could then manifest itself as part of formal church doctrine at the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, there are many problems in Trinity anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and this cannot be reconcilable, and that's why it was, even the Christian scholar, they say it's a mystery. Why? Because it is not comprehensible. Yes, it's, and, it's completely yeah. logical. So, so where do you stand as, come from the, uh, the, the people of the book side? Where do you stand? Do you stand in believing one God? Yeah. Yeah, so I believe the God, mm -hmm. as you guys would say in, in Arabic, I believe he has a name, Yote Vave, I believe... What would be attribute of that God in your belief? What would be the attribute? He's compassionate, he's merciful, he's slow to anger, he's abounding in loyal love and faithfulness, showing loyal love to thousands, and he forgives transgression, iniquity and sin. And that's, that's I think, from Exodus 30, you know, that will try exactly what the Quran says about God Almighty. Yeah. In that, Ezekiel, Ezekiel actually, it's more clear. It, yeah, it, but, the, the, the son will not bear the iniquity of the father. You know this passage, is it, is it, is it, I think in Ezekiel, I, I can't recall exact, is somewhere around 18 to 21, where okay. the son will not bear the iniquity of the father, no. neither the father will bear the iniquity yeah, of the sorry, son. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So it goes very in line with Islamic, yeah, absolutely. Understanding is saying it, it, everyone will be accountable for their own sins. For sin. their own sins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. And there is a bit of confusion in the Hebrew Bible uh, about that. But that passage in Ezekiel is really clear. And um, and that statement is, is also very clear that, you know, God Almighty, it is in his nature to forgive iniquity, transgression and sin. That is who he is. Mm -hmm. So in that, in that way, everyone will be accountable for their own sin. Yeah. So what your concept of what is right and what is wrong, mm -hmm. 
Do you take it from Old Testament or the New Testament? So, I would, I would take it through the teachings of Yeshua, and you mean Joshua? Uh, so Yeshua is the Hebrew name of Jesus. So Jesus is the transliteration name of the Greek interpretation of the Hebrew Yeshua. But it shouldn't be from Greek. What is we? No, so, so, the, the Jesus language was not Greek, yeah, right? So, so in the original language, in Palestine, yeah. Jesus was from Palestine. Yeah, yeah. We don't disagree. The no. Palestinian name would not be Greek name. Do you see? No, so so that's why. What I said. Okay, so, sorry. In the Hebrew, so you know Moses and Joshua in the Old Testament. You know those guys? Yes, of course. Yeah? So Joshua in the Old Testament was Yehoshua. Yeah. Yehoshua. Is yeah. that how you spell it? Yeah, yeah. Is that, it in that, Hebrew or Aramaic? In 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 Hebrew, Yehoshua. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, they believe that the second temple period, when Jesus was alive, Jesus was alive. That will be pronounced Yeshua. So the the name of the Messiah is Yeshua. In English, it's translated as Joshua. Yeah. That is actually the name of of Yeshua. Okay. Messiah. Yeah. However, what happened with the Greeks transliterated Yeshua and it eventually became Isus and then in English in the 17th century it became Jesus. Mm. So when I speak to you guys, Jesus is a very Americanized name. Well, it's an anglicized name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, as as a person, someone from Palestine, yeah. it more likely if you give them all the name yeah. and give them Isa as well, yeah, they yeah. would take Isa. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shows that original tradition of yeah, the yeah. Jesus name mm. in the Quran, and yeah, that's why yeah, God uh, has. I can use Isa. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, oh. And and it mentioned that Isa was referred as Isa ibn Maryam, the Jesus the son of Mary, yeah. because yeah. he had a virgin birth yeah. through Mary. Yeah. So, uh, and what's your proposition from prophet muhammad because prophet muhammad also a messenger of god we yeah, believe yeah, yeah. Oh, um, what's your what's your take I on think it's with an him astonishing i think it's an astonishing event so you know i've got to put my cards on the table in the sense that um, i may change my mind at a later yeah, date okay. because i need to read more of the quran the hadith I like that. and this type of yeah, stuff yeah. But as it stands, you know, I, I, I could comfortably say, based on my understanding, that Muhammad was given a genuine message yes. to, um, to share with mankind. And the aim wasn't to rewrite scripture. Yeah? No, not actually, he didn't say that as well. It's good. And, and this will come on to, perhaps as we talk, why that. What he important. said is, yeah. what he said is, I have completed. He didn't say, I have restructure yeah, the yeah, message so, do you see so, yeah. so there is a a way how he concluded the message yeah. so his message was simply let me put it in a chronology so he when he given the message to the community he said this is not the new message mm -hmm. and then he referred those messenger yeah. and by knowing their name it's also a miracle mm -hmm. a person who is isolated mm -hmm. no ahlul kitab around him yeah. no people of the book around him Knowing Jesus' name, knowing Moses' name, knowing Adam's name, knowing Abraham's name, yeah. it's a sign of first step that this guy is knowing, has a source where he's knowing, he's, yeah. he's I knowledgeable mean, about I, it, right? I, I we cannot it, deny that. Yes, I mean, my, you know, I, I have researched quite a lot into the revelation. Now, I, whether Muhammad, and this is my answer, whether Muhammad did have knowledge of the earlier scriptures or knew other followers of mm. the book mm. or, um, or, or knew Jews, for me, that doesn't take away from the absolute miracle of this revelation. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you've got an individual who at the age of 40, with no known kind of significant religious influence in his life, likely that there may have been some but but no significance as a revelation from the angel Gabriel which is in alignment with the scriptures and previous revelations that essentially says two things he's saying first of all the Jewish people need to know that Isa is the promised anointed one he is their Messiah I mean that is perhaps the most revolutionary statement because at that time the church was not sharing with the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. Rather, the church was declaring that Jesus was the second person of a triune Godhead, co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent with the Father, 
who had a divine nature, a celestial nature, and a terrestrial nature, had two minds, but one mind, it was complete nonsense. So the revolution of the message is, tell the Jews, Jesus is the Messiah. He is the one written about in your scriptures. He is the one who has come. Another one is not going to come. And then to the Christians, it's you have got to stop preaching and teaching that Jesus is divine, that Jesus is God Almighty, and you've got to stop this nonsense with Mary, declaring that she is the God-bearer, declaring that she is the Queen God, of Mother heaven. Mother of God, like Catholic Dig churches, they say that, yeah. many Christians today will deny that even today Mary is not worshipped. Mary was, so was worshipped was. Worship then Absolutely. and is worshipped now. I agree. Regardless of what anyone says. Now, I know that there are many genuine Catholics who would not say what they do is worship, but the definition... There is actually a group, a, a group actually, if you Google it, yeah. I'll give it, uh, the name, it's, it's not coming to my mind. There is a group that categorically worship Mary in the church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's clear. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. We when cannot you, hide the history. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't. has been worshipped. And when you see the images of people carrying yeah. Mary, yeah. Uh, there, there, there's a, there's a, there is a, a religious ceremony that occurs in Venice. And I you know, this is in line with the, the pagan worship. You know, the Mithras god, the Greek gods. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, fact, they, these, in fact, these are the copycat. So well, this is not actually the... It. So they, they, there was a ceremony once a year, they'll get the goddess and they'll float her down the river. Yeah. And now instead of the goddess, it's Mary. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, so... I think going back to the topic, yes, I, I, we agree on those things. Yeah, yeah how... So, like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, by knowing the name of the messenger, previous messenger, yeah. that's, that's one of the claim. Secondly, the, first of all, a prophet of God would not be an imposter. Someone must be truthful, right? These are the category. Well, we need to, so anyone who claims that they are prophet of the one true God. Yeah. So in what, what, what criteria would you say they well, must have? I'll say, I'll, I'll give you the criteria that it's set out in Deuteronomy 13 and Deuteronomy 18. So, because at the end of the day, the Torah is the foundation. The, the Hebrew Bible is a foundation for our, for our understanding. So it says that if any, if you believe that fully from God, without yeah. we'll, we'll, any biased interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Do, do you see? So yeah. I would say. Well, let, 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 let me tell you what Deuteronomy 13 yeah. says. So and I I want you yeah. to give me an objective criteria, yeah, will, not without without deut Deuteronomy. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's no, too, no, so too set. I need to yeah. see. Well, I'm gonna okay. Because otherwise, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's important. Now imagine, because you have a, a background of a people of the book, mm. you know the story, you can, these are relatable. Now imagine if someone has completely non-religious yeah. and he would like to find the truth about whether indeed he is the messenger of God. Yeah. So that objective criteria must be objective and unbiased. Imagine we don't have any... But hey, I'm going to get... The, the way I can answer this to you... Do, do, do you see my point? Yeah, but yeah, I do. But, and this is my reply. The Quran declares Mary was a righteous woman and she read the scriptures. So no, she didn't read the scriptures. She did? No. It says that Mary read, 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 read the word. Where does that say? I'll have to read the chapter no, again. No. But it definitely clears that, that it says that Mary, Mary, Mary had the, the Hebrew Bible. No, in, not in the Quran. I don't know about, but no, it's not. No, nowhere in the Quran it say it's bold claim. Nowhere in the Quran, Mary read the Hebrew Bible. No. Sure. Yeah. Um, Maybe you got it from some other sources. Not in the Quran. No, because I only read the Quran. I don't read other stuff. No, no, no. It's not there. Okay, so... Well, I'm not... I, I just Maybe I'll just try and... Um, Mary... Uh, maybe it said that she was righteous. Um... Uh, okay, we're not, I'm not going to yeah. read the whole chapter. No, it's, it's not there. Okay, so, yeah. okay, so we'll get back to the question. So, uh, the characteristics of a genuine prophet of the one true God is that they will live a life in alignment with the commandments of God. They can live a holy and righteous life. They have got to preach the God of the Hebrew Bible. Yeah, so it cannot be a different God to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, or Ishmael and Jacob. Um, 
and uh, they are the two key criteria. So the fact that they could do miracles is actually irrelevant. The fact their prophecies come true is irrelevant. The, the two most important criteria are they preach the one true God as revealed in the Hebrew Bible, that God is one, the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea and everything in them. And he has given us the law, a moral standard by which we should live by. Um, Let me go by, by your definition. Yeah. Let me go back one of the verses in uh, chapter 3. Mm -hmm. It's about Abraham. And it goes like that. Allah said, "Ma kana Ibrahim a Yahudian, wala Nasraniyan, wa kana Hanifan Musliman, wa ma ana min al Mushrikin." So let me read out the translation. I don't want to mistranslate. You know, <laughs> it's God books. You know, we have yeah, to be yeah, careful yeah. about what we say. Yeah. We don't want to attack. And uh, you know, you, you are a sincere brother. In in uh, uh, where is that? Okay, it start with sixty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, people of the Scripture. Why do you argue about Abraham while the Torah and the gospel were not rebuilt until after him? Mm -hmm. Then will you not reason? Meaning, whoever disputing about Abraham, mm -hmm. Torah and gospel mm -hmm. didn't come before him, after him. Yeah. Because Torah came to Moses, mm -hmm. which is long after yeah. Abraham, yeah. right? And of course, Jesus came after Moses yeah. as well, right? Yeah. So God is asking us, will you not reason? Here you are. Those who have argued about which you have some knowledge, yeah. but why do you argue about which you have no knowledge? Exactly, yeah. Right. So there is. Um, so Allah said, "Balla you kinun." Yeah, like uh, people are not certain about things, you know. Yeah. So and many people make uncertainty as a basis of their understanding. Yeah. And that is where we get fault, and we got, uh, uh, you know, our basis of premise got corrupted, and that's why we have a wrong result. Inaccurate results. So, going back, and Allah knows while you know not, then it was a make a bold claim. Ma kana Ibrahim, ma nafia here is God negated it that Abraham was not not a Jew nor a nor a Christian, but he was one inclining toward to a Muslim. Now, the criteria. If it is godly one, you know, I am following your criteria. Yeah. Someone has to follow God's message. Abraham, mm. surely we can agree with. Mm. If Abraham is a Muslim, yeah. then we should follow Abrahamic, Abrahamic faith, which is Islam. So let's, let's break it down. So you asked me, what are the criteria of a prophet? Yeah. So a prophet is somebody who claims to be sent by God with a message for certain people. Yeah? Yes. Abraham was a man who was declared righteous in the eyes of God because he submitted to God. And in, in your language, the word submit... It means someone is Muslim. Is Muslim. Yeah. See? So, and in fact, the Muslim faith, when the Quran was written, doesn't constitute everything we see here today. The phrase articulates one who submits their will to God. Abraham did that, you see. So that phrase should be taken. What, what, and this is part of the beauty of the simplicity of the message, is that Abraham, prior to the giving of the Torah and the prior to the giving of the gospel, was a man who was declared righteous in God's eyes because he submitted himself to yeah, God. Yeah, plus also, God, God, also, God, God, also God. a messenger of God. He was a messenger from God, but, but actually, who did Abraham communicate with? No, actually, actually Quran actually mentioned it. Quran actually mentioned. Yeah, no, I, do, I, know, I know he did speak to some people. I mean, no, about, about messengership. So yeah. when he received the book, yeah. so it, it mentions Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa. So mm -hmm. the scroll was given to Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa. Suhuf means scroll. Ah, that so that makes sense. That nah, makes sense. exactly. That's why I was saying there is yeah. a missing puzzle. Well, I need but, to add that but, one. But let's not, you're not going to disagree with me that when Abraham spoke, he was leading the people to the one true God. So I come back Correct. to that of criteria, course. Agree. which is basically a genuine prophet or messenger has got to point people to the one true God. Correct. And, and so what it says in what we mean, God spoke to Moses, said, look, I will even let false prophets do miracles and their prophecies will come true, but I'm doing this to test you. Yeah. But the real measure of what is who is genuine is someone who points to the one true God yeah, and they live a righteous life according to my law. Yes, I think, let me now summarize it. I think we are all in agreement. Now, in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he started his message, mission, at that time, the pagan are worshipping many false idols and gods. Yeah. You know, when he started saying one God, the same mission like Abraham, mm -hmm. 
he been start their community starting you know prosecuting him they threatening him they torturing him and it in one point it was a constant battle and but he is not renouncing the message after all the prosecution happened in one point in one point the Quraysh, the pagans the leaders they get gathered together and they said you know we need to take this seriously and they came to him to make some offer offer is we'll give you kingship we'll give you the best woman what you want we would abide by you whatever you say we will listen to you only one condition you know that condition is renounce the preaching of the one true God. Correct. Now, it said that this man is genuine. That's for surety. We can conclude that. Secondly, why he has to bring Abraham, Moses, and Jesus here as an example? When the pagans are asking, oh, we don't believe that. You are the messenger of God. God would communicate a human as a messenger. You know, like concept of human as a messenger. Hey, buddy. Uh, you know that word. I like it. Yeah. You know, when, um, what do you call it? When they were unsure about the pagans, right? Yeah, yeah. The pagans are unsure about that, whether God will communicate his message through a human. Yeah, yeah. It's like shocker for them because of their idea of pagan worship. So that being said, they consulted with the Jews whether the God can God communicate. And in fact, in mention of the Quran, mm -hmm. Quran asked the people of the book yeah. that whether the God sent him Absolutely. as a messenger, right? Yeah, yeah. So that shows, look, no one telling this information to Prophet Muhammad. Then he was exactly bringing the same information that Abraham preached to his people. Right. So, so, yeah, so, you know, it's interesting as we've been talking, I just think... Because you, you don't like to take prophecy and other is irrelevant. So that's why I'm, no, I'm going no, in no, line sorry. with the history. No, 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 you, you misunderstand. Sorry, you misunderstand. okay. Um, prophecy is... Sorry, I may be misheard anyway. No, it no, could no, be. no, yeah, no. Okay. So, uh, sorry, what I was Yeah, I don't, I don't like... About, I, don't, no, no, I can understand yeah. why what you said. Yeah. So, I'm not discounting prophecy. Yeah. I'm not discounting miracles. They are very, very, mm. very, very important. Very, very powerful, yes. What I'm saying is, is that... Um, we can't use them in isolation to clearly the core of the message. Correct. So, you can talk about. We, we the, should. The yes, I agree. So, I what's fully. What's interesting about the passage you just quoted to me about um, again? So, so the message in the Quran is to the Jews in question, Christians, not basically. What, what the message is this? Look, submit and surrender to the one true God. What's interesting is in the New Testament, it again emphasizes the righteousness of Abraham. Yeah, because there was the same friction amongst the early church, amongst the Orthodox Jews, against Gentile Christians, against genuine authentic followers of Yeshua, about what does righteousness look like. So that statement there is a summary almost of a passage in Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about Abraham, how he was a righteous man, um, how God spoke to him, how he, how he acted in faith. And so actually this is, and the great It's actually said, mentioned in the Quran. It said, yeah. Inna Ibrahim halib. So he is uh, compassionate and forbearing. Yes. So it signifies and declaring and praising Abraham and his character. Yes. So we don't doubt about it. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, praised highly about Abraham. And in fact, you see, you, I don't know if you see, the thing that I think the Quran does, going back to my, to my earlier point, yep. is that the core of the message is designed to put right what has gone wrong. Or as someone said to me the other day, if you imagine a computer program mm. and it's got bugs yeah yeah the purpose of the virus destroyer whatever it's not to rewrite the whole software it's it's to target the, the virus in the operating system and once the virus has been dealt with it cracks on you see and so that's why i think the core message of the quran is quite narrow it's quite focused but it's clearly holistic and it is it is deliberately targeted the you know it's a very profound verse in the quran goes in line with that what you okay. said so Allah said mm -hmm. the truth has come mm -hmm. falsehoods have perished do you see because you know prophets and messengers duty is not to tell the message of God first first they need to 
report what is causing them not to accept that message. That's why, you know, in our creed, in Islamic Shahada, that's why our belief doesn't start with believing in one God, rather we should avoid the false God first. Why is important? Because so that when you worship God, you don't mix your worship with the false God and true God. And that is why, you know, our kind of Tawheed, which is the oneness of God, has oneness of God has three sections. The scholars have break down in three sections. One is called Tawheed al rububiyah which is the Lordship of God, which is in a sense that Allah is the creator, sustainer, and the maintainer. And then the following Tawheed, which is Tawheed al uluhiyah or Tawheed al ibadah means the oneness in worship. So once you identify who is your true maker, then Tawheed al uluhiyah means worship the one who deserve and don't give anything else, any other object, the share of worship. And this is where we find that Christianity is a misdirection of worship because the portion of share of worship going to Jesus and portion of share of worship going to the Father. What we are saying, whatever you are attributing to the Jesus, this should go to the Father. Okay, so interesting. So does that make sense? It does. Because I've heard people argue with Muslims mm. about Tawheed. I didn't, so I've not studied in detail. But so the the Hebrew Bible has a number of prophecies yeah. where it says that God Almighty is going to raise up a human being yeah. who he will anoint essentially to rule his eternal kingdom on earth. Now we all know that an earthly king is given obedience. Even in Islam, in Christianity, we come before a king, most of us will bow. Particularly in the past, it was never thought peculiar that you would bow down before a king, given the honor and glory that is due their position, their status. In the Hebrew Bible, it declares, and scripture cannot be broken according to Yeshua, and is that God actually bestowed the title Elohim, God upon certain men. So Moses, the judges of Israel, by virtue of the position that they assumed, and even the Davidic king. And there are some passages where the Davidic king was seen to be sitting on the throne of God, not literally the throne of God, but that was the position he represented. So we as humans are comfortable with giving a level of obeisance to someone in higher authority than ourselves, but that is not the same as worship of the one true God. The thing that Christians get... Actually, Tawheed al actually clarify the missing gaps here. Because mm -hmm. what happened is when someone overprays someone, yeah. In one point, the reverence yeah. or, you know, when I say I respect you, yeah. but if I over respect you, that becomes a worship because I have love and reverence. Yeah, yeah. And we have an interesting hadith uh -huh. with, narrated by a, a prophet actually explained. Uh -huh. So some of the companion yeah. start over praising him. Uh, okay. And you know what he said? Don't over praise me as they done with Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, you, see, you, so that yeah, shows, yeah. you know, how the Christology actually developed. Yeah, but let me let me show you what I would say. So, do, do you get it? Why? I understand absolutely. Yeah. And this is what I, I said earlier today to another guy and, yeah. and will say again. So, the Hebrew Bible New Testament explicitly declares only God Almighty alone is worshipped as the one true God, the creator of the heavens, the earth, the seas and everything in them. That worship was reserved for God Almighty alone. Interestingly, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the ascended and resurrected Jesus, basically in the throne room. Yeah, these are end time yeah. revelation, isn't it? Now, yeah. it says that, what's really interesting is that Jesus received honor, glory, blessing, not because he is God Almighty, not because he is divine, not because he's an eternal pre-existent son, but because he Muslim, because he submitted himself to the one true God. Yeah. And and clearly we can get on to the death because it's pretty central. Uh, to submitting himself to death on the cross. And by virtue of that, he has been elevated into the throne room of heaven. Yeah. And but you know in this account. Yeah, but sorry, I, just, just yeah. And so what you see there, it actually says, and they sang a new song. It talks about something that has never happened before. So this idea that Jesus was before he came to earth was part of a trying god hidden worship is categorically false because revelation Absolute. chapter 5 though explicitly declares yes. that only the one who sits on the throne mm. has been continually worshipped yeah. 
as the one through whom everything came into existence. Mm. It says that, black and white, irrelevant of what church creed and state would say, mm. or the early church fathers. But in Revelation chapter 5, Jesus is given a special level of adoration, yeah, that is above any other man, any other man, not because he's divine, but because of what he did. And then the other worship songs in the book of Revelation, again, they are all attributed to God Almighty. Yeah? Yeah. So I think uh, even in, in Islam, we've been told to love our prophet yeah. more than our own self, more than our parents. Mm. So this love does not mean form of worship, yeah. right? So there are our category and yeah. there are boundaries and steps and limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him, clarified those areas mm. where the oversteps has been done. Yeah, and yeah. because of the yeah. overstepping, yeah. now the, the, the whole religion has been re-categorized and re kind of new because it became a new religion. Yeah, that statement actually echoes something that Jesus said. Jesus, I mean, the same way Jesus says, if you do not hate your, leave your mother or brother or sister and come and follow after you, I can't recall the exact verse, but there was a parallel statement of Jesus where I think that's really what he's articulating there is that my teaching is more important than your familial bond mm. because and in particularly in the case of Yeshua, um, Yisra, is that because he has been anointed and appointed mm. to bring the message of eternal life, yeah. that is why he must be elevated yeah. above any other family member, personal authority or yeah. whatever. So I think, I think also, I think if we summarize it, of course, Jesus is a prophet. He was someone, a godly person, showing people to the right path, but he was only for the children of Israel. See, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't agree with that. Because, you know, but, but because the, uh, uh, he was clearly mentioned that he came for the lost sheep of Israel. Yeah. But, see, this is where the... What, what's your take? Because, you know, yeah, Quran, yeah. Quran actually mentioned that, that Moses came to the Bani Israel. The location, right? Yeah. It's clearly mentioned that he was, came for Bani Israel, he came yeah. to them. Isa came to the similar area yeah. and he was mentioned as as a messiah he's mentioned look he's mentioned as someone is close to Allah Muqarrabin, someone who is a prophet of God yeah. someone who praised highly in the sight of God yet he was a messenger one of the interesting very very interesting passage Quran was crystal clear about it mm -hmm. and when I say crystal clear is as clear as the glass and that is in chapter 5, uh, 100, if I'm not mistaken, 116, when this is, this is an account which hasn't happened yet. This will happen in the heaven. So a future story for us that God has revealed in the Quran. And let me find out. I think it's very interesting. Yeah. And Allah is saying, and be beware of the day yeah. when Allah will say, oh Jesus, Son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as deities beside Allah? He will say, exalted are you. It was not for me to say that which I have no right. So he knows what, he, he knows his limitation, right? Yes. If I had said it, you would have known it. You know what is within myself and I do not know what is within yourself. And indeed, it is you who is the knower of the unseen yeah. and continued he said something very profound as well i said not to them except what you commanded me to worship allah right see i can i can give you multiple verses so yeah. for example in i think it's psalm 22 it talks about the resurrected jesus yeah worshiping my brothers in the midst of the assembly it says that in the book of hebrew jesus um declared I only speak what you've commanded me to say yeah. um, actually Jesus, this Jesus, is actually very prophetic because so, Quran so, yeah, so, you know, and Jesus also doesn't know the date or hour when he will return of course of course we know but that also, we know also Jesus said he had no right authority to even decide who sits at his right or his left hand so that little summary statement there actually is what I would argue, there is a foundation of, of, of truths where you can go to the Hebrew Bible New Testament and that confirm what's being said there. I just want to go back to the, what you talked about Jesus because my understanding, my mm. belief who Jesus is, yeah. is different. It's clear, it's clear that he was sent for children of Israel. No, 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 but sorry. Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. 
it's important in light with Muhammad peace be upon him to understand because Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was sent for entire mankind. Okay. Can I, can I just Do you know why entire mankind? Because all of the messenger never said the message is complete. Yeah. There is always a prophecy that someone is coming. Yeah, yeah. So yeah? Oh, I, yeah, but yeah, we, we can go there. I just want to, so I just want to, I need to make a few quick points just for your listeners and yourself so you can so you get this. So, yes, I believe Jesus was, so two points up front. I believe Jesus was more than a prophet. And I also believe that. So when you say more than a prophet. I, I'll explain this. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just giving the quick summary yeah. headlines. Yeah, and I'll, I'll yeah, yeah. Expand. That Jesus was more than a prophet, but also both the Torah and the gospel were for all people and i'll explain why so first of all in regards to jesus and you might have questions but i'll just hit a few quick summary points of point one and a few summary points point two then you can kind of speak so so um in deuteronomy 18 god almighty said to moses that he was going to send a prophet to the israelites like him from amongst his brothers the thing that was going to be different between this prophet and moses was that god said i'm going to place my word in this prophet and all men must hear and obey what they say, and if they don't, I'll hold them accountable. Now, this prophecy was universally ignored by the early church fathers and the doctrinal creeds because it proves Jesus cannot be God Almighty. But this is what they ignore. And this is, in fact, what many Muslims... It's actually 1818. It's actually yeah. goes in line with Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because, yeah, you know, if you, was, if you look at, like Moses, right? If you look at this passage, if you look at Moses, who is like Moses? So when I say Moses, the most uh, common similitude you'll find Moses with Muhammad, peace be upon him, not Jesus. Well, I'm, I will, I will respectfully disagree, and I'll tell you why. Okay. So, we do you want me to explain, or okay, okay you explain well, it, I'll, 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 so, Okay, okay, you go first. So, I mean, there, there are, there are, let's go through. But anyway, I, we have more stronger prophecies in 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 Bible yeah. for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, so but what we don't so basically. The, the reason why the, the narrative is so powerful for Jesus mm. is, first of all, we have five explicit individual witnesses who all declared Jesus is the prophet like Moses, including Jesus who declared, I am the one Moses wrote about in John 5.47. Philip in John 1.49, Stephen in Acts chapter 7, Peter, Acts 3, yeah. Paul, Acts 26 and Acts 28. Now, the reason why I believe this is genuine and doesn't and cannot fall under the caveat part of the New Testament has been distorted, corrupted, is that the church ignored this prophecy. Because when they elevated Jesus to the station of Godhead, they didn't want anyone to know Jesus was the prophet like Moses. I actually believe the book of John, the primary message of that book, is to articulate to the, no, wait, that's like, to the Jews, why Jesus was the prophet like Moses. Mm. And the thing is this, Moses is quite an objective test. Mm. We know that Moses was an Israelite, yeah? We know he did many mighty miracles. We're yes. talking extraordinary. Yes, correct. Yeah? World-changing miracles, yeah? We know. By the way, we don't disagree anyway. Great, great, yeah. But we also know that Jesus did, according to the New Testament, extraordinary world-changing miracles. In fact, Jesus declared that the people only believed who he was based on what he told them. And in fact, Moses was only followed because of the miracles he did. The people tried to kill him. They didn't want to speak to him in authority. I mean, all, all look, yeah. these are the traits yeah, of all the prophets, all the prophets but anyway. The, yeah, but, but the, but, so Jesus, Moses, huge miracles, Jesus, huge miracles. Moses hearing the voice of God, Jesus hearing the voice of God. Moses seeing the form of God, Jesus most probably seeing the form of God. But what was the thing that was different that God Almighty said to Moses was going to be out this prophet? God Almighty said, I'm going to place my word in this prophet. You see, when God Almighty spoke to Moses, he spoke through an angel. The angel spoke to Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and then Aaron spoke to the people. There was a chain of transmission. What God Almighty said to Moses was, the prophet I'm going to raise up is going to be different. I will speak to him directly. My word will literally be in him. And the testimony of Jesus throughout the scriptures is that the word of God was literally... Now, we can't, I can't describe it metaphysically, but the point is, is that there was... Sorry, forgive me. Yeah, that's there right. Was no, there was no Jehovah. There was no God Almighty, angel, Jesus. It was direct transmission. I, 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 think, I think where I know where, where you're going. So, I, I, if I can understand. So, if when we look at Moses, yeah. 
Now, you've given me uh, the similitude of Jesus and Moses. Actually, if you look at Muhammad, peace be upon him, with Moses, and uh, let's put Jesus, yeah, on a table form. Yeah? Yeah, I'm listening to you. Table form. So if you look at Moses, Moses has a natural birth through parents. Muhammad is natural birth through parents. I'm, I'm giving you, you will find more similarities Moses with Muhammad than Moses with Jesus. This is where I differ. Well, because no, look, so, but, Moses... Mo to talk about the birth of. No, no. Because every human no, but, being, no, I'm, every human I'm, being... I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying when this was prophecy was maintained, who will be like Moses? And I am saying Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam more will be like Moses than Jesus, because Jesus is more like of Adam. Look, Jesus similitude is more like Adam, but Moses and Jesus, uh, sorry, Moses and Muhammad are more similitude. Yes. In, and I'll I'll I'll, ex I'll, I'll, I'll explain them. I'll, I'll explain. Yeah, let me let me. I'll 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 explain. And in Quran clearly said. You see, the Quran never says I, Muhammad is the prophet like Moses, you see. It doesn't say it no. anywhere. But the New Testament, five times explicitly, and moreover, you see, the point, you can talk about the birth. No, what, what I'm birth saying is, is Quran. Quran, yeah. make it crystal clear that Muhammad is the messenger for all mankind. Uh, okay, so we've not gone on to that yet. No, uh, that's, no that's why I'm going there. Now, going back to, if you really evaluate who is more like of Moses, you will find Jesus. Now, if you say Jesus, look at his miraculous birth. Moses didn't have a miraculous birth. Je Moses was married. But we have no, 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 let, let me, Sorry. yeah, let me finish. Moses was married. Jesus was not married. Well, we don't know. No, Jesus was not married. Right. Moses was prosecuted. He fled. He gone to a, a place uh, in Islam, uh, we believe he um, he went to this place called um, yeah, I know the story. Madian. Madian. Yeah, yeah, I know he went. The story. He went there. He spent eight to ten years there. So, we, if we look at Moses' pattern, mm. and now you take okay, these are the Moses' pattern. Yeah. Who have the similar pattern? Now you will find Muhammad peace be upon him on this pattern. Now let me let me give you. It's it's very important to understand the comprehensive manner. Yes. Now, when we look at Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was a miraculous birth. Now, we find Adam, who had a miraculous birth because God created him. And Quran affirmed Jesus is like of Adam. Allah said, Inna masala Isa inda Allahi ka masala Adam khalaqahu min turab summa qala lahu kun In the, the similitude of uh, Jesus, to Allah is like that of Adam. Both created from, both created by Allah. Yeah. And so that's what it says in Romans hmm? five among Christians. Now, today. now that's why it is important to understand the prophecy. In, if you look at Isaiah's prophecy, uh, if I'm not if, uh, Isaiah forty two, where is mentioned about there will be a prophet come, and he will sing, and it was mentioned uh, the Mount of Sela. So the Mount of Sela, you will find this is in Medina, okay. in Medina, which is prophet, uh, you know, second part of his life, he done his mission and he spread the message where he was a state leader. He was, he was a prophet of God. He was giving the law from God yeah, yeah, to guiding people, right? And he is solving the problem of the society. And the reason why I said Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent for all entire mankind. If you look at our society as a whole, yeah. human being, we have a lot of issues. We need to have heavenly law to guide ourselves. Look, the problem is in the society, we need heavenly laws to guide ourselves. Heavenly laws will be a perfect solution for entire mankind. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he brought those guidance clearly. Like, for example, can I take Jesus as an example of a married man, I cannot take him because he was not married. But Muhammad is married and he showed how, how to treat with his wife. You know, they are, his wife given testimony how to be a better husband. Now in terms of looking after a state, no prophets are state leader. But Muhammad we find 
how to solve the state problem. Look, economy, sociology, yeah, yeah, all, all of the aspect I, I of right. I would agree that the Quran has some, I'm not going to talk about the marriage yeah. bit because yeah. I, don't, I, I don't want to, a, I've not read about that, so yeah. I can't comment. Nice, but, but what I can comment is that on some of the stuff I've read in the Quran, there's some really practical, yes. really good, yes. really righteous advice. Yes. Yeah? But we do need to go back. So you made the comparison between Prophet Muhammad and Moses in their lives. Yes. I would argue that that is the same life for every prophet. There's Jesus. No, what? Well, okay, so it's, it's really important. So you are right, they do have those similarities, but actually so did Isaiah, so did Jeremiah, so did Isaiah, so did Malachi, so did many of the early prophets and disciples of Jesus, yeah. you see? The thing we need to concentrate on is the words of the promise, and, and the, 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 this, this is really important. I, I don't disagree with you. By the way, by the yeah. way, let me tell you, yeah. when the revelation came to Prophet Muhammad the first time, yeah. prophets, you know, I, I'll tell you, it's important to know. Yeah. When he, when he, shared this message that angel communicated this message yeah. then he went to his wife yeah. and he explained that situation yes, that yeah. and then his wife's uncle his name was waraka yes, yeah. waraka well, he had some knowledge about yes, yeah. yeah so khadija his wife taken him to waraka yes, yeah. do you know what waraka said waraka said that one point of time your own people will drive you out of your own home mm -hmm. because what you will preach. Mm -hmm. yeah. we'll pick it up That's all right. And if I live by then, I would have accompany you in your mission. Yeah. Yeah. What does it tell you that? It tell you that there is another prophet they're waiting for. Yeah. And Waraka at that time understood yeah, yeah. That but a I'm prophet not, should be coming to the I'm Arabia. Not, I'm, not, I'm not denying. Yeah. Yeah. And this is being controversial. I'm not denying yeah. that Muhammad most likely or is a genuine prophet of yeah. God. Mm. What I'm saying is, is that when we're looking at that prophecy in Deuteronomy 18, we need to listen to the words we have recorded for us. And basically, he says, "I'll raise up a prophet from them among their countrymen like you, and I will place my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them everything that I have commanded him." You see, the key distinguishing factor between Moses and the prophet who was to come it wasn't their birth or upbringing or stuff. It was the fact that God was not going to speak to this prophet through an intermediary. So he said, I will place my words into his mouth and he will speak everything to them that I've commanded them. And the man who will not listen to my words that he will speak in my name, I will hold accountable. I think that's, that's contradictory. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why theologically it's contradictory. You need to reflect on that. I want to. Do you know why? I, think about it. What I'm going to say. Well, but we, but we then need no to... man yeah. has seen God at any time. Number one, God never speak to anybody directly. Everybody God speak to them through the veil. That is yeah, the but no, but There is no I, way. I agree, no. I agree. But, but even there's, Musa, there's even Moses, yeah. Moses speak to God directly. You know that. Remember, are you right? But look, look. What, what did but what did God say to Moses? No. But what did God no, say to no, Moses? No. Though? Now, if I take the criteria. Now, yeah. it's, it's an objective criteria. It's Moses. Criteria. No, it's, forget, it's an objective criteria. What I've not said yeah. is how, how God would put his words in his mouth. I've not said that Jesus saw God face to face. All I'm saying is, is that... But if you, if you, if you say the second category, there will be an anthropomorphization because... But we don't need to worry about that, do we? No, we need because... No, no, look, no, no, no not, not in the, a strict sense because... You see, no, when, it, it is. I'll tell you why. Because we are mixing with God attribute, the human attribute, whether can God come to the creation and directly speak to the world? Because look, hey, but we don't know how God speaks to an angel and the angel communicates that message. That's for, there, therefore, when, when, like, let me tell you, when Jesus was born, when Jesus was born, yeah. what is his, uh, how did he respond? What is his first, do you know what he said? Uh, the Quran has a story, I can't remember what it is. No, this is important. This is important. Yeah, but well, it's important, I'll tell you. He said, straight after birth, straight after birth, he spoke. And this is not recorded in the Bible. Yes, I don't know no, whether, no. I don't know whether it's about Apocrypha. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know about Apocrypha. But I, from the current Bible, yeah. it is not there. He said, Qala inni abdullahi athani al wa God made me a slave, a prophet. Now, when he was speaking, are you saying God directly speak to his mouth? 
No, so I can't. I this can't, is this no, is the problem. Brother, no, no, but do, do you okay. see my problem? It, it is it's problem more of a theological problem. Well, yeah, but you know we've got because okay, you know well, because well, it's we, a strict sense. I well, no, no, but the because if you we are creating a problem, but but yeah, there are there are some things that and this is not me getting out of it. At the end of the day, no, 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 of God, course. You know, there are two things. When Muhammad was called. When Muhammad was called, sorry, Muhammad, when Moses was called to be a spokesman for God, he yeah. basically said, "No, I'm not very good at speaking. Yeah, please use my brother." Yeah. yeah, and God said, "Okay, so you will be like God to Aaron, and Aaron will be your prophet." So, and we know, according to Acts seven, that actually God Almighty communicated His message to Moses through an angel. So we know it was angel, sorry, God Almighty, angel, Moses, Aaron, the people. Yeah, we also know that Moses said he wasn't very good at speaking. So it's really important we listen to the, the thing that was going to be different because there have been lots of prophets. So now I, I think if we uh, narrow it down, right? If we narrow it down. So what is the difference between when God spoke to Moses yeah. and when God spoke to Jesus? Well, because all we can say. Because if I, if I say God speak Moses directly, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمَ Musa speak directly. Yeah, but, but see, there, there no, is I, ambiguous I, passages. No, in, no, in, it's just clear. It's clear. What's that? Sorry. The Moses speak God directly. What happened in the burning bush? You know that story. Yeah, but that wasn't God who was speaking to Who's speaking? The angel of the Lord. Where does it say? In Acts chapter 7. Let me see. Because in Islam, yeah. God spoke. I don't know about... Of course, my belief is... But... No, no, so it's really funny. So in Acts chapter 7, in Acts chapter 7, um, Stephen, it's a really powerful passage actually if you're speaking to Trinitarian yeah, but, Christians. Of course, we will. But, but um, Stephen there basically declares that it was an angel who spoke to Moses in the bush, it was an angel who travelled with Moses for 40 years in the wilderness, and that an angel can speak in the first person as God Almighty. If you go to Exodus 3, what you will see is. No, it's clear now. I think maybe you were reading another. That this pa yeah. passage is clear. Say, Moses saw God face to face upon an unknown mountain. Yes, Sometimes know, after know, he spoke to the Lord says. in the burning bush, but he went to free the children. So it's, it doesn't say that in that passage. But the passage you are referring, which passage? So but this act, passage is not saying. Yes, yeah, so, so I'm going to... So, so have, have a look, uh, investigate this one. No, 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 I've, I've read this a hundred times. But it's clear here. No, no, no. So, okay. You are right, but you need to understand two things. Okay. Yeah. Are you giving your interpretation or no? No, no, no. This, okay. is, this is irrefutable fact. Okay. Yeah? So, I completely agree in Deuteronomy and Exodus, yep. when you read it, it will appear as if Moses is speaking directly face to face with God. Yeah? It yeah. will read like that. Okay? However, in Acts chapter 7, when Moses recounts this... Okay, I think it's more clear now. So, he's saying... No, you don't... You don't no, he said, no one can endure God's presence unless the glory of God be upon him. Right? Moses was son of God, was in... in so, basically, here he's saying, Moses saw God face to face... Up in an unknown mountain. He didn't see someday. him face to face. He saw the back of God. He says he saw his back. And in fact, Jesus refers to this in John chapter 8. When he's criticizing the religious leaders, he says of them, you have not heard the voice of God, nor seen his form. Okay. That, there, there, is, there is a passage where, where it, basically Moses is put in the cleft of a rock and he sees... What is the principle here? No man has seen God at any time. And right. Yeah, and live. Right. Yeah. Now, therefore... But don't forget, we if, don't, I don't have to answer... No, it, it, it's clarified the theological question. If... God has not been seen by any man. Yeah. That means yeah. when he God spoke, yeah. God is not coming to physically. No. God, okay, God inspire people to talk. So if you say God inspire people to talk, yeah. we can categorically clearly can say that God spoke to all this messenger. Yes, but but do you recall so through how, Wahi, how the inspiration? Yeah, but, so, but, but actually, okay. God. The thing that was different about Moses and the other prophets is, is that when God speaks to Moses, he doesn't do it through a dream or through a vision. He speaks to him clearly so he can understand. Correct, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, but, the point is, is that God... What is the difference between Moses speaking to... But I can't answer that. All I can yeah. give you is what Scripture that, says. That's what, I, that's what is, I'm is, saying. This is yeah, a problem because no, if, I, problem. if we set Jesus as a separate criteria and I'm saying give me another criteria that he doesn't... He has a special criteria that no... But this is... But, but, okay, but brother... We can, I can't answer, so I'm not going to go beyond what is written. 
There is a prophecy and a promise that God said he would place his word in this prophet and that is the key distinguishing feature between that prophet and Moses. That is the key distinguishing figure. Yeah, and I, I mentioned that you know, so in no way, shape or form, the Moses will be similar to Jesus, rather Moses will be similar to Muhammad. Yeah, so I, I, have, I, I hopefully have argued coherently to you and your, and your guests that I understand that this is what you guys have been taught. But no, 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 what I'm going to talk. This is okay, well, objectively, believe, objectively, okay, you, we can believe, see put it on a paper, right? See, I so this is I'm arguing is objective because the thing, the reason why so few Christians will ever bring this up to you in discussion, or you'll even find it in early church writings, is because the church rejected the identity of Jesus as the prophet like Moses, despite the fact Jesus says he was. Philip says he was, Stephen says he was, Peter says he was, Paul says he was. This is like one of the core messages of the New Testament. But, but it doesn't fit with Jesus being God Almighty. This needs, to, and it also doesn't yeah, fit. Yeah, so with that, Jesus that's being why that's a it's, a, it's a problem. That's why New Testament is a basis of problem. Do you know why? Okay. This is another. I'll tell you why. Yeah. It's a fundamental problem. Yeah. Because you are a very nice person. Honestly, I, I speak to you, and I, I kind of engage with you in 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 discussion. But I am saying, your when you look at New Testament, you critically evaluate it, and you put your thought. Yes, there was someone interpreted Jesus is God. I am not interpreting Jesus is not God. Fine. But how about other messages? Then you rely on the rest of that prophecy and the messengership based on your interpretation. What's your name again? Aziz. 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 Do you see the problem? Because he has a pick and choose option. But, but let me articulate but this. So the, I, I am more aware mm. of the textual issues, no. alterations, corruptions of the New Testament yes. with respect than you are. Yeah, I know way more and could be way more effective. In but you don't know how much I know anyway. No, well, I, 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 fact, sorry, I shouldn't say that. No, that, but anyway. Maybe a bit rude. Anyway. But what I'm saying is that, because uh, I've heard, and I do listen to many of the top, um, your, your brothers here yeah. who come down and preach. Often when they come with errors in, in the Bible, from my perspective, they are quite small. Look, I'm, I'm here to spread the truth. Yeah, no, no, exactly. and, and I wanted to on the, uh, ask, uh, talk to you on the common ground yeah, yeah. that, of course, you believe, look, yeah. Cut to the chase. Let yeah, me. But I do want to just say one thing. So yeah, I agree there are there are errors in the New Testament and the Hebrew Bible. Yeah. However, I don't believe that. So I believe the Scriptures contain the Word of God. Not every word is the Word of God. You've got to use your discernment. And where there are some issues, like Jesus being the prophet like Moses, where you've got multiple witnesses. See the key errors in the New Testament. I think that the problem words. when when there is a problem happening. Don't forget, you're, you're the Quran John, isn't it? Mention. John. The Joshua. Quran sorry. Even mention. Mm. Muhammad being the prophet like Moses. That's a later interpolation. No, but look. Isn't it? But true it is. The Quran no. doesn't actually say it. No, Quran clearly See, said. Do you know? Quran has No. It, what did you know? Let me tell you how Quran said it. Quran clearly said, Noah, in one line, yeah. I have sent you, O Moses, Abraham, Noah, Muhammad, and you we have sent you guidance yeah. and worship God alone. So look, the things made super crystal clear. Now, yeah. if you wanted your way of putting into the Quran, right. then you need to ask yeah. God. Yeah. You know, you need to ask God. Josh, Josh. The Quran itself is no, look, look. very clear. But, but to okay. be honest, it's, okay. it's very super clear, right? Okay. But if you wanted your way of, okay, it should be like Moses, you need to ask God, okay, reveal the verse. Would you agree, would you agree the Quran does not state Muhammad is the prophet like Moses? I.e., where it says Jesus is a prophet, Muhammad is a prophet, Mary is this, and uh, what, is that. What, what I'm saying, it, yeah. it, it is not even important at all. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because, yes. no, I'll tell you why. Yeah. The I, author, I, I author, think author. I think it's very important. No, I, I, yeah. because it's not important, because he even cleared out the whole point of sending messengers. Uh, and, you know what? Yeah, sorry, okay. do you see? No, so no, he I'm mentioned about clearly yeah. that who are my messenger, yeah. what is their message, yeah. what you need to do, yeah. And what are the things you should follow yeah, and that, prohibition? That, that, all yeah. of the things clear. Yeah, that, that's cool. That's right. Cool. So yeah. all of the things I and you needed to follow this yeah, messenger yeah, yeah, yeah. are clear. Cool. That's why I'm saying yeah, yeah. it's yeah, not yeah. required. But you know what you're right. As I said, because yeah. the early church was. I, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Because the early church wasn't even mentioning this, it doesn't need to be put right. Does that make sense? So I believe that's why it's not. It's not actually even addressed in the Quran. So we, we're both agreeing, but for slightly different yeah, reasons. And, and and again, go back to the fundamental problem. Whether can we take Bible as a reliable source? You see, because yeah, I, know, I mean, I after the conversation, you're probably realizing now whether how much trust can you put on this oh, no, book? No, no, and I, that's I why it is it is an incumbent upon God. Yeah. Now just think about 
God is watching everyone in confusion. Do you think God will leave us in confusion or send clarify the confusion? That's a very, very big question. Yeah, no, but, but, but we both know, and you probably agree with me, and this is how I articulate it, God gives the revelation and then, and then gives humans, gives us the responsibility to protect it. And those righteous humans who get down their knees and pray, God will pray and then answer their prayers, send and help, send messengers. That's why, so that's it's why. It's a balance. So it, it ebbs and flows over time, depending upon how people behave and stuff like this, how people pray. That, that's why, Josh, that's yeah. why Quran has been protected. I, that this I, is one of the arguments. Yeah, it's I a, it's I the understand. strongest proof and evidence for someone to follow. Just, Josh, I, I believe, I, I you know, I, you know, I honestly believe people narrative. like you should be Muslim because you are so sincere. You have a good heart. I honestly believe that. My interaction, you, you, you are a, a reasonable man and, you know, so... Well, I, I, don't, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying regarding exactly. the way that the Quran was protected. But, but that shows. Pardon? That shows, yeah. that signifies a, a, a lot of things. It's significant. It is, it is significant. significant. Why? Significant. Because God has taken the care of the book so that humanity yeah, should not forget, be misguided. Do you see? Brother, brother, you don't deny that prior to that point, the earlier scriptures are not treated in that same way. That doesn't mean what God did prior to that was irrelevant, illeg illegitimate, no. or that the character of God changed. Do you know why? The point it, is, is that God kind of does something. Let, let me tell you something. I need to show you that verse. Yeah. I need to show you that verse. Mm -hmm. It's very aligned with what you have said. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. Allah said in um, uh, where, uh, uh, verses, He said, Allah sent Torah with yeah, yeah. light and guidance. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. When He said Torah, yeah. He's talking about the book that sent it to Musa, yeah. the Moses, right? Yeah, 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 with yeah. guidance, yeah. with guiding the children of Israel. Yeah. So look. Our belief, you know, our belief is not only believe in the Quran, we believe in the other books as well, yes or no, no. but not the corrupted one, the one exactly revealed by the Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, so do, do you get my point? I understand it. I, I appreciate it, and I, I understand. Yeah, I understand it perfectly. We won't go into all the details of that, but what I do want to address yeah. though is that this. This belief that Moses was just sent just to the Jews and Jesus to the Christians. What a lot of people don't know, and actually the Jews themselves hide this, and the Christians have hidden this. But when Moses um, freed the Israelites from Egypt and they went to Mount Horeb, a mixed multitude went with them. So it wasn't just the Israelites who fled with them, it was a mixed multitude of races of all different nations. And when they went into what was called the Promised Land, different people came to join themselves in Israel and when the law was given when the law was given there are provisions for non-Israelites to come and live and in fact many of the commands in the Torah are saying you must love the alien you must love the foreigner in your midst a lot of people don't know this but the law is crystal clear the Israelites were to open up their houses to the alien and the foreigner now Jesus now and throughout the Hebrew Bible see after Abraham or Moses to Abraham the 12 tribes yeah but the 12 tribe is long after Abraham. Yes, 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 yes. What yeah. I'm saying is that, it's a, I suppose it, in a way it's a progressive revelation that we have in the scriptures to mankind, you know, in a way. You know, we have the revelation to mankind and to Abraham. He was faithful with that promise. God said, all nations will be blessed through your seed. And I believe both sons uh, are the fulfillment of that promise. Yeah, we then have... The and, and you know, with, with this promise, yeah. I, uh, Prophet Muhammad yeah. in the genealogy of Ishmael. Yeah, um, so he was called Ishmaelites, um, and all of the prophet yeah. up until uh, Moses. Yeah. He, oh, he, really he, cool. he from Ishaq, yeah, right? Really from cool. Isaac, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And from God sent all the messengers yeah. and the prophets mm. through the children of Ishaq, yeah. and then God fulfilled his promise yeah. by sending Muhammad yeah. in Arabia because you know that Ishmael's one of the son, yeah. Kedar. Uh, okay. Muhammad is the descendant of Qaeda. Yeah, that's perfectly... And you know Arab, Arab, Arab has some of the things they pride of. Okay. They know their genealogy. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's very true. People are very good. Yeah, they, they, they love yeah. their genealogy yeah. and they love poet. Yeah. But, you know, there are some of the things they admire. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we count this narrative that, that the Hebrew Bible, that the God of the Hebrew Bible is only for the Israelites. But I'll tell you why. Not only was there a mixed multitude, the laws were there for non-Jews to come and join themselves with Israel, but many of the instances of the miracles of God occurring 
were to non-Israelites. You see, when but it, it, it doesn't take the it doesn't take the fact it doesn't take the fact. And God sent um, Jonah to the Ninevites. Mm. He sent a prophet to non-Jews to preach a message of repentance and to believe in the one true God. Look, Daniel, Daniel, when he was under the Babylonian king, because of his faithfulness, the king but, said... Oh, but Jonah, God. with Jonah, we know that the sign in any way given. No, what, what, what was that? What I'm saying is, yeah. no, sorry about the sign, no, I'm, but he was sent to... I think, to in regards people, to the context of our discussion... Yeah, no, but I'm saying, but you said that, you see, the God of the Hebrew Bible is only for the Israelites. Whereas no, 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 I didn't say. Okay. I said, when God said messenger, yeah. Jesus was sent for specifically for the children of Israel. Well, he he no, was not sent for entire mankind. No, no, no. See, I didn't God. say that God is only for Israel. I said God is oh, for mankind. Sorry, but you said, you yeah. said Moses was for the Israelites. But, but the part of that law and part of the message in the Hebrew Bible is we see God Almighty doing great things amongst the people who are not Israelites. And actually, there are lots of prophecies in the Hebrew Bible. That that, I think there is a distinction between here when the message was sent to who? And where the location has been mentioned, yes, sir. the Bani Israel, yeah, the children of Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're gonna cut it short. It's a very long discussion. Yeah, you know, no, I good, need to, I need to grab a drink. Oh, but okay, you yeah. know, cut to the point. Uh, the Gentiles are cool, So, okay. so, so, okay. the you children. Have one last point. I'll have one last point. Yeah. So okay? the final point is, yeah. Jesus was came for the children of Israel, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last and final messenger. I mean, you have sealed the deal up until to Jesus, right? No, uh, no. I, I would say, I would say the Quran declares that I am saved. I don't believe the Quran says I must. I think according to Muhammad's engagement with the Nazarene or the Nazarene, as they, as they are, um, Nazarene, yeah, Nazarene, yeah. It seems like there are two groups of Nazarenes in there. There's some who are genuine, spirit-filled. No, but we people, have a hadith where we have a hadith are. that Nazarene came. To Prophet sallallahu yeah, alaihi wasallam. Yeah. But I'm talking what the Quran says about the the Nazarene, yeah. And I am not called to, because I believe that the, the, the Nazarene. No, the question the here: is, How do we look at the Quran? Is important. Yeah. yeah. First of all, yeah. Quran, the source of the Quran yeah. is from Allah. And whatever Quran said is a muhaymin, means Quran is an authority over other books. Why I sh Quran say clearly? Because you evidently can tell that there are part of the scripture has been corrupted therefore quran confirming that this is truth and this book will judge the previous book would you agree that that book calls the nostream we are saved would you agree that's what the quran says so whoever now if the verse goes like that <laughs> yeah you know what verse is called about sabians and other groups right ah uh, yeah, yeah okay the, but the, let me tell you yeah, yeah. that verse actually start with something Interesting. You know what that? As he I said, said there are two groups. Who, amen, uh, amen, good, amen. Those who believe among that group. Exactly. Yes, right. Okay. Exactly. Those, those Josh. Exactly. exactly. Now, yeah. when that belief was explained, yeah. it has to be in light of Quranic understanding uh -huh. what is belief. Not, not afterwards. Not the later interpolation. But I thank no. you. No. My, my you, 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 you get it. I think this is the. Yes. Yes. The, but thank you for confirming. So I knew that there was a there was a. So the amen So yeah. then Allah explained what is. Believe in God. Yeah. So Allah said, Amana Rasulu, Bima Unzila Ilahi Mirabbi Wal Mu'minu. So Allah said, Kulun Amana Billahi wa Malaikati. So Allah is talking about believing Allah, yeah. the, uh, uh, the angels, Malaikati, wa Kutubihi, the books, wa Rusulihi, the messengers, yeah? Wal Yomil Akhir, the, uh, the, the uh, afterlife, you know, yeah, the day of judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so all of these things yeah. you have to believe. So belief is not about God. The belief entails all other things, oh, yeah. but, but, but of course, the most important things. belief yeah. is the belief in Allah, yeah, and then I you have to have things. yes. So now, if you believe that, now it's just accepting Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a messenger, and which then you, you, which I, I honestly believe that Josh, you need to look. This is the only thing I would say. Oh, I know, but don't forget. So I'm going to say, um, I appreciate that. Love the conversation. Um, I believe that. I think we need to catch up again. Yeah, we should do, but. There are many prophecies in the Hebrew Bible that the righteous servant of Allah, of God Almighty, was going to bring the light to the Gentiles. And I believe Jesus... Which are non-Jews. Which are non-Jews. Well, that's right. See, it's a bit, Jesus said that he was that individual. And actually during... See, it's a bit like 
God has a plan. He was sent first to the Jews mm -hmm. to call them back to repentance, to the worship of the one true God, to reject the religious elite, to get rid of the, the sacrificial cult of sacrifice, yeah? to return back to the law of Moses, to live righteous lives. Jesus had to go first to the Israelites and to call them back. Yeah? And, and just like as like all the messenger, yeah, no, but, but, yeah, but, all the messenger yeah, but, did the same but, thing. But in the full knowledge that that God almost knew that they were going to reject him, and by virtue of that, the message would be spread out to the Gentiles. And so the New Testament is a story of not just the Jews being brought the word of God, but rather the Gentile people. So the, the issue is, is that. The, but the but Jesus Jesus clearly said, I did not come for Gentiles. He no, said no, but that was an answer. That was an answer to a particular question. No, but then again, now we when when we when you have when you have when you have the Hebrew, we can't ignore all the prophecies. But, but then again, we them. have the Old Testament prophecy about Prophet Muhammad. Now I say I tell you the, how the problem will solve. If your conclusion, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi indeed is a messenger of God, then it solved the problem, because Quranic account is more precise because Quran in light of uh, of uh, what was the understanding of the Abraham and his message Quran goes aligned with that so that's why gods give the analogy but uh, it. now but when when the prophecy was clear prophecy was saying you can have a look uh, is Isaiah 42 prophecy yeah but that, I believe that's Jesus you see Isaiah 42 no. is the, no I'll is. tell you why I'll tell you why it's not you know why it's not it has more specific one specific thing there are specific there are ambiguity in few prophecies yeah. and prophecy must be clear yeah. if someone say an ambiguous prophecy you would say mm, but if i said no within three minutes this will happen yeah. and if that happened this is clear yeah. so that isaiah's prophecies clearly talk about the mountain of salah you know if you google so, it I, I know you're going no. to go to that that, that bit. but i'm talking about the clear verse yeah well, I, I could go to Isaiah 42 and other passages of Isaiah, but let's not go down that. No, but it's, because it's important. It's important. It's, I, I no, now, nah, nah, then if you but, then but. then if you take uh, Deuteronomy 18:18, 18, 18, then you can reconcile Deuteronomy 18:18. 18, 18. Do you know why? Because otherwise, it will be a because you would go okay, Jesus ambiguous one. Okay, Moses was God the messenger. Jesus was God the messenger. But I I go particular aspect of okay. marriage life yeah but, but that's the same to every prophet there's nothing different no about but that. but Isaiah, there is a difference between jesus who's, uh, exactly so because why say, because of his but, nature of saying that the reason why muhammad is the prophet like moses yeah. is because he had all these things at the same the problem is every prophet had those things the thing no and not every prophet i'll tell you why almost every no prophet. Look, okay, I'll, tell Bible, why, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Malachi. There are few. All the prophets yeah, and yeah. messengers have some uniqueness, yeah. but yet, but, yet they have some differences. Well, we'll let, we'll let people decide. But yeah. I do want but to one say, of the two uniqueness yeah. is Jesus' miraculous birth, yeah. Yeah, but which is in separate. line with you know, that's which is though. no, which is a sign for God yeah. that He is an, indeed a messenger of God. I agree, right? I exactly. Agree that, but that's, now but that, that similitude not, must match with the correct similitude which is Adam but, but we are forgetting that we no, go no, back to the step back we just haven't discussed it and yep. we haven't discussed it but the, just the, the last point about Jesus being a uh, his message is good news for all of mankind is that what we can't deny is in the book of Acts yet yeah, very early on in the history of the church Peter upon whom Jesus uh, appointed to, to lead the church was told categorically by God Almighty that the message was for all people but Look here, here. I think that will be reconciled if, when you look at the statement when Jesus said, "I have many things to say unto you now, but you cannot bear them now." Mm -hmm. The Spirit of Truth shall come, and yeah. He will guide you to all truth. When you, when we, so, so just for your fearlessness. So you see, yeah, so Jesus, sorry, if you if you look no, at the, no, Jesus I, as a new look, I don't believe New Testament is correctly preserved anyway. I understand, but I understand. but even if we take it, consider it. Some of the passage, but it clearly we shows deny historically that the early church actually spread amongst the Gentiles. But we do that, not. That's but not this what is this brought that was unique, spreading it to non-Jews. Don't forget, Christians were made up of every nation of the earth by the seventh, by the sixth century. Every nation. Of but then again, then again, then again, we need to see which Christianity, like exactly. It, exactly. So this that's is the point because if you go back to Nicaea, Nicaea the Nicaean right. Creed, right? Yeah. You know. Let it's done. Let's yeah. press pause and yeah. I'm going to tell you something. But, but anyway. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But I mean, 
cut to uh, the chase. Yeah. You need to look into Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, this is one of the things. And uh, um, I'll, I'll share you some sources. Yeah. And, I mean, and, I, and look, we need to discuss all, all, all of the evidence yeah. and compelling proof yeah. for to be Muhammad is a messenger of God. Yeah. And then it's funny, the reason why I believe he is, is, is something that you don't believe the Quran says. No, but what I, we say Quran, whatever Quran no, said no, no, so, is, so we so believe I, in the totality believe the Quran, of the Quran. Surah is at 1, 4, 126, 127. I believe the Quran teaches Jesus died on the cross. No, what, I believe it no, no, no. explicitly no, says Jesus no, no, died on the cross. No, it's clearly, it's clearly said. It's it clear clearly said. says he died. No, it's clearly said. Wama yeah, it did not appear to them, sir. No. Yeah. After that, you need to read that after. No, I have, I, I've read it. No, no, no. But that, for me, no, no, no. that's what actually no, no. gives it It was some... clear. It yeah. was super clear. Yeah. It, you know, when the word Yaqeenan, if I say a message, this is the camera, yeah. this is a statement. Yeah. And if I say, this is the camera, yeah. and if I say Arabic word Yaqeenan, yeah. that means certainly this is camera. So after this verse, if you look at the finishing of the word, yeah. it said, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ Yaqeenan." Means certainly they didn't. Yes, exactly. So they didn't. He, but, so but, he wasn't but, crucified but, but, or killed. No, but that's not what that's. Allah said, you know what? Allah said, Bal Rafahullah Allah Raised taken him, him raised him. Right. Do you know that that you is know, the because, exact same language Peter uses in Acts chapter two? Let me tell you. To talk about Jesus being let, raised. Google it. There is a group brother. called. There is a group called Basilides. These See? are the early early groups. Uh -huh. They also believe he wasn't crucified, and they used oh, to. Man. This is this is this could be the unity you see potentially God willing that could occur. How hopefully you know I wanted to be a Muslim you know honestly I feel like you, you know you 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 have few things you have a lot common. And, there's, you know, there's a lot. Islam, I asked God. Mm. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, um, I think Islam, like what the Orthodox Church became, uh, had a lot of very clever men do a lot of thinking, compiling stuff like this, and 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 sadly. Um, resulted in friction, um, and so I, uh, yeah. So I'm grateful for the chat. Very hey, cool. It was, it was yeah, very cool. Look after yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, alhamdulillah, I have a wonderful chat with Josh. Um, he had some issues, but alhamdulillah, I've clarified a lot of the question. A lot of the things he's mixing up. So I hope Allah will guide him to the uh, Islam and uh, he seems very happy and uh, let's hope uh, Allah guide him to Islam. Assalamu alaikum.